Pride is coming soon. Oh, it's going to be a good time. You know, at University Christian Church, we have actual Holy Week. We have the theology of Broadway, and we have Pride. And those are big seasons here at University Christian Church. And you're not going to want to miss Pride. Grace and peace to you from God, our mother, Jesus, our sister, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. the problem is? Yeah, that's exactly the problem. The same way you see these fishes dying here and you didn't do anything to help them, you see people dying out there and you have the same reaction. Oh my God, she's going to hell. Oh my God. I don't care what they say on the title deed. God said the property is already yours. I'm not going to forgive. I'm not going to say I'm sorry. No! Somebody come hold me. Somebody come touch me. The church has always had false teachers who are actually wolves hiding in sheep's clothing. This is especially true for the church today, and these wolves cause chaos in many churches. Here are some of the most disturbing things that are happening in churches, progressing from bad to worse, and my thoughts about them. Mixing church with entertainment and culture has been a popular method to try to attract more people. It's a marketing tactic to try to rack up lots of numbers of people, but instead it actually just distracts people from what the church is actually for. Mixing church with entertainment and culture often results in very strange behaviors. Watch this next clip to see what I mean. Christians are called to worship God in spirit and truth, not in Shrek costumes. This next example shows how mixing churches with entertainment can lead to a false understanding of God. Pride is coming soon. Oh, it's going to be a good time. You know, at University Christian Church, we have actual Holy Week. We have the theology of Broadway, and we have Pride. And those are big seasons here at University Christian Church, and you're not going to want to miss Pride. There are, the more I've sat with Star Wars, the more I have recognized that it is not just good entertainment. It is also very theological. And not just theological, but it is compatible with the theology of Jesus, right? The Force. Now, I think whenever I watched Star Wars as a child, I thought that the Force was a power that you could control. But Luke Skywalker says it best when he says, the Force is not a power that you control. It is the energy that runs between us all. It is the energy, the tension, the balance within us and through us. We should not be getting our understanding of God from a fictional character of a sci-fi series. Instead, we should get our understanding of God from the Bible. When the Bible is not preached in churches, then churches will stray very far from the truth. This leads to many strange things that happen within our churches today. Our culture often accepts and promotes sin that God is not pleased with, and we should not mix our churches with this. This next video is another example of when we mix church with the lies of the culture. Yeah, so if we think of Jesus as the one who reveals God, uh, I was really struck by Angela saying earlier that God is And I think as humans, we have a tendency to construct God in our own image rather than to recognize that we are made in the image of God. So I think Jesus um, himself on a number of occasions. I think, you know, just a little phrase where Jesus is lamenting over Jerusalem, longing to gather Jerusalem as a mother hen gathers her chicks. Um, I think if you look at the foot washing from John's Gospel, foot washing elsewhere in both Old and New Testament, that it, it's consistently done by, by women. And yet Jesus takes that on. People often cast that as being the servant's role. It was the woman's role. Mm. And Jesus does it and becomes the woman at that point. Ironically, he is constructing God in his own image. He is applying the distorted gender ideology of our culture and using it to say that Jesus himself. But Jesus is truly God and truly man, and his maleness never changes to femaleness. As disturbing ideas make their way into our culture, the churches that mix with culture adopt these ideas. Watch this next video to see what I mean by this. This is Ruthie. She is a
girl. That means when she was born, everyone thought she was a boy. Until she grew a little older, old enough to let everyone know that she was actually a girl. Girl is Ruthie's gender identity. This is Ruthie's brother, Xavier. Xavier is a boy. That means when Xavier was born, everyone thought he was a boy. And as he grew older, it turned out everyone was right. He is a boy. Boy is Xavier's gender identity. There are so many different ways to be a boy or a girl, too many to fit into a book, but not everyone feels like either a boy or a girl. Non-binary is a helpful word that can describe a kid who doesn't feel exactly like a boy or a girl. The disturbing ideas of our culture ultimately lead to disturbing behavior. If that video wasn't disturbing enough for you, then you will certainly find this next video to be very, very disturbing. The sinful acts that our culture promotes are lies that are damaging to people in churches and cause confusion and chaos when mixed. This next video is a clear example of everything I have discussed so far. Grace and peace to you from God, our mother, Jesus, our sister, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm Drew, and I'm currently serving as intern pastor. I'm just going to church. I'm transitioning from female to male. My pronouns are they and he. Mixing church with false spirits results in a mockery of God. It can look disturbing as we just saw in the previous clip, but sometimes it can be even more deceiving. Watch how these people react when this man waves his arms. <laughs> This woman tries the same method. That's your hunger and your expectation for God's restoration, for his purpose, for his identity to be established inside of you, for his victory to come out of you this day. Jesus Christ died on the cross so that you can. People mock God when they perform false miracles in his name. One of the most popular people to perform false miracles is Benny Hinn. Watch how he does this. Benny Hinn is being deceptive. He is not actually performing any miracles. To make it even worse, he also does not do these so-called miracles for free. His nephew Kasti Hinn, who has seen all of the behind the scenes, exposes him. Here's what he says. I saw the testimony of healing, and I saw the stories about healing, but I never once saw a real healing. I never once saw my uncle or anyone else for that matter go and lay hands on someone and say, in Jesus' name, rise and walk, and they would walk right away, just like you see in the Bible. It doesn't square with the Bible at all. It's a complete scam. It's utter deception. There's no place for it in the church. No pastor should ever do that. There is no model for, hey, give all your money to, to my thing. That's a scam, complete scam. Benny Hinn and many others are scamming people to perform these so-called miracles that you have seen. And really quickly, if you want to support this channel and help spread biblical truth to more people, I would be so grateful if you would click that subscribe button. Many people claim to perform miracles in the name of Christ, but many are lying. We see that manifest itself in various ways. This next video is a good example of of this. Mixing false spirits with the church results in deception. It's disturbing to think about deceiving others in the name of God. Satanic deception's always with us. It was there in the garden, wasn't it? It's always at work. It's always effective. God has always warned his people, called his people to vigilance, called his people to discernment. It's a long war on the truth. And it rages. And it rages all the time. And the true people of God have always had to battle the false prophets and the liars. And what makes them effective is the deceptiveness of it. The devil seeks to 
twist, confuse, suppress, and misrepresent the glories of the Son of God. The devil seeks to draw attention away from the Son of God to a false image of the Holy Spirit while pretending to honor Jesus. The true work of the Spirit does the opposite. The true work of the Spirit exalts the true Christ in all glorious preeminence and the full and accurate understanding of his gospel. The disturbing things happening in churches primarily come from false teachers. False teachers replace the Bible with entertainment and culture, and they teach false doctrine. An example of this is Michael Todd, who is the quote-unquote pastor at Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This next video shows what I'm referring to. Our cradle. This is the place of immaturity. I'm frustrated. Mm -mm. I need to get cuddled by somebody. I'm not going to forgive. I'm not going to say I'm sorry. No! Somebody come hold me. Somebody come touch me. Some, knowing you have the full capability of getting your big butt out of the crib and handling business. We have been cuffed to the cuddle and now God's asking us to mature and we're still running to the crater. I'm not going to serve nobody. They don't even respect me at that church. I'm not, uh-uh. Gia's new thing is no, 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 no. Ironically, he is being very immature in his explanation. Mike Todd thinks he must entertain to make the Bible seem more palatable. Watch this next clip of another preaching by Mike Todd where he takes entertainment to another level. They get a word from God and they do this. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Whee! No air, no anointing. You can do this in your own strength. I could do that on the ground. I could do this, but to, I've never been able to dunk in my whole life. But if you give me this trampoline, 10 feet, 12 feet, you could take that mug up to 14. I, I would, I would, because what's not possible for me without a word, it's possible when I have a word from God. It's time for you to stand on the word of God. I find it ironic that he says to stand on the word of God as he continues to do the opposite. He has not been standing on the word of God. He has only been trying to entertain. Watch this next video to see another disturbing way people try to entertain in churches. You know what the problem is? Yeah, that's exactly the problem. The same way you see these fishes dying here and you didn't do anything to help them. You see people dying out there and they have the same reaction. Oh my God, she's going to hell. Oh my God. We see people dying out there, but we don't take action. We don't do anything. We don't care. We truly don't care about them because if we did, we would give them the hope, the medicine to, to heal their souls and to save their souls from hell because hell is real. I'm gonna save them. Don't worry about it. I got them. <laughs> Chill, I'm not gonna let them die. Another problem is when preachers distract people with cheap gimmicks and performative acts instead of simply preaching the plain truths from the scriptures. Entertainment is not the only method these false teachers use. They also tell lies about the gospel. We are, as I say, hashtag fabulous made glorious. <laughs> the God created us very good in the beginning, but he wasn't satisfied with just fabulous. RuPaul, I love it, but you got nothing on the angels. You're gonna see that glory that is gonna be revealed in us when we become like the angels. God wanted more than just fabulous. As important as that is, he also wanted glorious. And that's why he's allowed us to walk in the mystery of these, of human sexuality and gender. God does not want us to be confused about our gender and we are not fabulous. We are imperfect sinners in need of Jesus. But the disturbing teachings of false teachers have no limits. Listen to how this pastor from the Wisdom Church in Manila explains what the gospel is. Gospel to the poor. What do you think is the good news to the poor. You don't need to be poor anymore. Because sometimes they say, well, why do you keep on talking about prosperity and money and finances and all that? Because it's part of the gospel. That is the good news to those who are in lack. That's the good news to those who are in poverty. That's part of the anointing that we carry now, right? We speak the good news. We, we speak the fullness of the gospel to the people. This is not the gospel. There is not a different gospel that depends on the person's wealth or status. The Bible does not teach that prosperity is part of the gospel. Romans 10 verses 9 through 10 teach, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. But these disturbing lies about the gospel have been told in some of the most popular churches by famous preachers.
others, such as T.D. Jakes. But the principle behind salvation, incidentally, you must understand that God is so into finances that the term that he uses to save you is called redemption. Redemption is about money. It is to buy back. I redeemed you out of the marketplace. Instead of using money, God used the blood of Jesus, but you were redeemed through a financial transaction. He bought you back. God redeems the sinner from his sin. This word has nothing to do with finances or worldly prosperity. In another sermon, T.D. Jakes is a lot less subtle with his lies. The blessing is yours. The business is yours. The property, I said the property, said the property is yours. I don't care what they say on the title deed. God said the property is already yours. And all you got to do is reach in and receive it. It's disturbing when false teachers distort the truth of the gospel. However, they do not stop there. They also distort who Jesus actually is. This is what this pastor from Pilgrim Lutheran Church in Minnesota says about Jesus. He just said that the Christian tradition rushed to reserve divinity in humanity exclusively for Jesus. There is zero biblical evidence that Jesus felt the same way. I believe this pastor is the pastor of Tim Walls, the vice presidential candidate alongside Kamala Harris. In Colossians 1, 15 through 17, Paul, an apostle of Jesus, says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Jesus, who is Lord over all things, does not need or depend on anyone. He saves his people out of his love and mercy. This next clip shows how cunning false teachers are. They sprinkle some partial truths with many lies. The most famous one to do this is Joel Osteen. Listen to this. We all have times where what we're hoping for is not happening as fast as we would like. We're believing for a breakthrough, to meet the right person, see our family restored, but it's been a long time. It's tempting to get sour, lose our passion, but while you're waiting, instead of dragging through the day, if you'll start being productive, building houses, so to speak, pursuing dreams, using your gifts, God will cause you to prosper in exile. He'll prosper you on the enemy's territory. He's not waiting to bring you out. He'll prosper you in the pandemic. Notice how the main theme behind the message is to suffer selfishly endure things for the sake of our own worldly prosperity. This disturbing man-centered gospel lowers the true God of the Bible and raises up man. This false gospel encourages people to seek God for their own selfish benefits. One of the best examples of someone who teaches this is Stephen Furtick. See what I mean by this. What was it about Nazareth that made them push away the one who came to set them free? What was it about Nazareth? Well, Nath Nathaniel's gonna tell us. Nathaniel doesn't get a lot of speaking parts in the Bible, so let's pay close attention. It's very uncommon that Nathaniel speaks. But the Bible tells us one thing that he said, that this whole text and our entire understanding of why God often cannot do what he wants to do in our lives. Because you come in this church and you look at me a certain way and you come with this sterile approach to God, but he can't do what he really wants to do in your life because you're trapped in Nazareth. So you'll listen to me preach and you'll sing a few songs and you'll say a few prayers, but Jesus is limited in what he can do through you your life because you are trapped in what you were. It's disturbing to hear when people try to limit God with man. God does anything he wills. Ultimately, these kinds of teachers are the cause for the disturbing things happening in churches today. You've heard me say before, many of you have, these, these churches are not churches. They're not feeding the sheep. They're entertaining the goats. What these kinds of teachers fail to do is preach from the Bible. They think they need to add to God's word or make it entertaining so that it can be cool. They replace the truth with a lie. The Bible warns us 
of these people. 1 John 4 verses 1 through 3 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. When you want to listen carefully to find out if someone might be a false teacher, first of all, listen for their understanding of the scripture to see if there may be error there. Is it sound? Is it biblical? Is it legitimate? Don't look at their personality. Don't look at the religious trappings that are around them. Don't necessarily look at their associations, although that may tell you some things if the associations are negative, but listen to what they say and do what 1 John 4 says, test them against the revelation of God. What is their approach to scripture? Are they into all kinds of things beyond the scripture? Are they saying things that don't you don't find verses for, though they sound good? Secondly, what is their objective or goal? Is it spiritual? Do you see them as people whose primary goal in life is to produce a group of people who constantly love God? Or do they seem to go after self-love? We should test all spirits and mark and avoid false teachers. Church is not for mere entertainment, but church is to worship God through the preached word of God. We have seen the many disturbing things that are happening in our churches today. How should we combat this? By God's word. 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 through 17 says this, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Scripture is sufficient and should not have anything added to it to try to attract people. What churches need to do is nothing less than to preach the truth from scripture. As Christians, we shouldn't let culture dictate how we are to behave or what we are to believe. Believe. We should let God's truth from the scriptures guide us and guide our churches. And whenever I am in that kind of environment with unbelievers, other religious leaders, people with other moral viewpoints, I really only have two things to say. And whatever the conversation is in one way is immaterial to me. The subject doesn't matter a lot to me. I'm just looking for ways to say two things. One of them is that Jesus is the only Savior. And the other one is that the Bible is the only authority from God. And I want to say those in whatever Whatever way I can, calling people to the single authority of the Word of God as over against all human opinion and to the only Savior as Jesus Christ. Our churches do not need to mix culture and entertainment. Our churches need to preach Christ and Him crucified. The Bible says, And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I think it is the goal of the Christian in his sanctification to be so nurtured and grounded in in this Word, in the revelation of the truth of God, that we come to the place that we love what Jesus loves and we hate what Jesus hates. We embrace what Christ embraces and we reject what Christ rejects. And that's what's offered by the Holy Spirit to every believer, so that we don't come to the cross like the crew of the Pequod came to the gold doubloon and say, I see, you see, he sees, we all see, but we see Christ. and we we see Him crucified. We see Christ not in the pluralistic American view of one way of among many, but we see Christ as the only begotten. We see Christ as the sole mediator between God and man, because no one ever, no one else, no one else was ever crucified for my sins. And that's what the church has lost, her focus on the cross. And when we come back and we see the cross, the way the Word of God reveals the cross to us, the way the Holy Spirit opens our eyes to the meaning of the cross, and we see ourselves in light of the cross, then maybe people will talk about us as those people who are turning the world upside down. Hi, my name is Mike. I'm a deacon, a husband, a father, a software engineer, and an amateur maker of videos. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to help me in my mission to spread biblical truth, just subscribe and watch these videos until the end, which will help the YouTube algorithm recommend these videos to more people. I'm committed to using the skills and gifts God has given me to glorify Him and communicate biblical truth. And I would be so grateful if you would come be a part of what I'm building. You can visit my website at joyfulexile.com to learn more about me and what I'm working on. I hope you're having a blessed day. I will see you in the next video. And remember, this world is not our home.